Hey guys, Steven here from my PLC training and I got a quick video today to talk about um, the path that we see work for people to go and become confident PLC programmers or basically automation and controls engineers is the end job title that we see people wanting to get into when you get into PLCs. So, so let me just talk about two common paths that we see. So you could go and become a controls and automation technician, which is more of a hybrid of working on things with your hands as an electrician mechanic as well, but also troubleshooting PLCs, occasionally programming them, setting up robots, interfacing robots and PLCs occasionally, things like that. And then there's the controls and automation engineer, which is more strictly PLC programming, automation design, integration, setting up systems, um, that type of thing. Let's talk about the paths that we see. So we have the maintenance technician, electrician, IT technician, or instrument tech. These are the common positions of people that we work with in factories, industrial settings, water, wastewater, oil and gas, manufacturing, food processing, etc. A lot of times you're not going to go directly from one of these positions to a controls and automation engineer. I have seen it happen multiple times. We've helped multiple people do that. And that usually comes down to you're really good at your job here. You've shown aptitude with PLCs and automation and you have some good connections. Then it is definitely possible to go straight from here to here. But um, a lot of times we recommend that you take what we call a stepping stone position. If you're in one of these titles, maintenance technician, electrician, instrument technician, IT tech, you may need to work on getting into a controls technician or automation technician position first and getting experience in that world. The goal is for you to get on the job PLC and automation experience. Even if you've taken courses, even if you've taken our courses, a lot of times employers will not consider that enough to, to help you go right from here to here. So that's one path. Now, if you are a already a controls technician or you're a mechanical or electrical engineer or some other type of engineer, chemical or process engineer, and you are trying to get to controls engineer, generally that is a more direct path. The easiest one I've seen is a mechanical or electrical engineer trying to get to controls and automation engineer because so many of those job descriptions, um, the requirements are that you have an engineering degree. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you can't do it this way and actually sometimes these people are better controls engineers than a mechanical or an electrical engineer, depending on what they were doing before in their job. You can definitely do it, and this one I've seen quite a bit is going from here to here. Okay, so let's, depending on where you have no industry experience whatsoever, and you want to be an automation and controls engineer, there's no quick path to doing that. It's going to take, you either have to go get an electrical engineering degree, or you need to get your foot in the door working maintenance and your brother is on the engineering team, right? And you need to have, have leverage and connections. But honestly, if you have no industry experience, you don't want to be an automation controls engineer. Anyway, I'm telling you right now, you, you'd be miserable way over your head. Um, and it would be pretty scary. My advice would be to, if you really love this industry, you're really interested in it, get into maintenance, electrical, mechanical, learn the equipment, learn machines, learn processes, and start picking up PLC skills. You can take a course online. You could take one of our, our programs online, go through that, learn PLCs and HMI programming, and start finding opportunities to apply it. Uh, apply it. Uh, but then also getting that on-the-job experience as a technician will be valuable. The next is if you already have experience as an electrician or maintenance technician, a good role to target next is a controls or automation tech. This is 
similar to electrician or maintenance technician usually, but it's more focused on the controls and automation sides, more, more dealing with PLCs, HMIs, drives, things like that, which is going to get you that on-the-job experience you need to better qualify for the, the roles that you're interested in, controls and automation engineer. And then next we have, you know, if you have experience as a controls tech, a lot of times you can qualify for these controls and in controls or automation engineering positions if you have enough experience. And having some training under your belt can really help. So those are the two things that I would really stress if you want to advance your career in any field, especially this field. Get some training under your belt if you're not able to get the on-the-job experience. And secondly, make connections, get to know people in the industry, be useful. Um, some people, by getting to know people in the industry, you actually reduce your chances of getting into the field because you're not a good person to work with. Um, so you need to be useful and have a good attitude when working if you want those networking and connections to actually do you any good in the future. Um, so that's a a side note there, but um, th these are the paths that I would recommend, and, and I'll go back up here to summarize the two different paths. If you are in maintenance or electrician or instrument tech, aim for controls technician first, and then a few years down the road, you can think about moving on to automation and controls engineer. Unless you know people in the industry or your boss is giving you opportunities to do automation, um, if you're going to step up and take those opportunities, then you, you may be able to skip this position, this uh, step. And again, I have seen people skip this step many times. Um, and then if you're in one of these categories, an, another type of engineer or controls and automation tech already, it's a lot easier to skip that middle step because you're already on a middle step. You can go right to here with the proper training and with putting your best foot forward in your career search. So if you want help with the PLC and automation training or help with getting your foot in the door with your first automation and controls position, those are things that we do here at My PLC Training. So you can learn more at myplctraining.com or reach out to me and we'd love to talk to you more about see, seeing how we can help you make this path a reality for you getting to a confident PLC programmer or automation and controls engineer. Thanks for watching.